Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now in here is the Core i5-4460. On the used market it retails for somewhere between $150 to $200 and costs about the same in pounds. If you want to buy one new then it will cost you closer to the $200 price point but being a keen bargain hunter I managed to find this one here for just £90, roughly $111. Welcome to the second episode of Why I Bought. This is the series whereby we talk about the upgrades I'm making to my personal PC, as well as why I bought the components and how much they cost, while still trying to stick to a reasonable budget. The 4460 is a quad-core Haswell CPU on the 1150 socket. It's clocked at 3.2 GHz and also has onboard HD4600 graphics, as well as four threads and an 84 watt TDP. There isn't really much about it in the way of reviews, but a lot of forums indicate that it makes a great go-to chip, as it won't really bottleneck any single graphics card at 1080p. So before we put it to the test, let's talk about why I bought this and not something newer. Firstly, the price was a big factor. I had a budget of £100. Any fairly modern i5 at this price is a bargain. This is i3 money. Take the i3 6100 for example, the popular Skylake offering that retails for about 100 to 120. It's a great CPU but it offers around 35% less performance than this processor and wouldn't have been as big of an upgrade from my G3258. Furthermore, I didn't have to buy a new motherboard either. The i5 just directly replaced the Pentium in my MSI H81M, meaning the money I saved can be put towards other things later on. I honestly don't think I could have got anything better for the money. Passmark puts it between the FX6300 and the 3570K. But it's time to put that money where my mouth is and jump into some benchmarks of our own. We're going to be comparing the results to that of my G3258 overclocked to 4.2 GHz to get an idea of the difference this upgrade makes. So first of all we rendered a 30 second clip in Premiere Pro. This was some Fallout 4 gameplay recorded at 1080p 60fps. We rendered it three times and took the average from both CPUs when paired with our 1060. Our i5-4460 managed to render the clip in 31 seconds, we made sure all other programs were closed. In comparison, the 4.2GHz Pentium completed it in 48 seconds. I decided to test this out first as this is my PC's primary use. Next up we ran Cinebench R15 CPU test. There's not much to mention here but the Intel Core i5-4460 completed with a score of 540 as opposed to the 308 of the G3258 at 4.2. Whilst this is quite the improvement, I'm still a big fan of the Pentium, which I think still did quite well. So let's jump into some games here. Fallout 4 first on high and we took a stroll through the most demanding area, Diamond City. Despite unlocking the frame rate and hitting over 100 FPS in some areas of the Commonwealth, Diamond City always proves demanding and we saw 60 frames per second on average. An excellent result. When we look at our Pentium here we still hit 40 on average and at least 60 in the open. We then took a walk through Riverwood in Skyrim Remastered with the Ultra preset to achieve a super battery 85 FPS even with everything turned up. We had to unlock the frame rate again here as the game only goes up to 60 on normal occasions. Interestingly enough, the Pentium stuck a lot closer here and managed an impressive 72. It's still a fantastic budget chip for those of you who may be considering it. For our final test, we fired up GTA 5 with the high settings, FXAA on and 2x MSAA. We could have pushed things a bit further here, but these were the settings last used, and so we thought we may as well stick with them for now. Throughout our half hour playtime, the game averaged at 80 FPS and didn't really drop below 60. In comparison, our Pentium stuck at 66. This actually makes me realise how capable that Pentium still really is, despite GTA 5 being more CPU intensive. 
So there we have it. For £90 or just over $110, I think the 4460 is a pretty decent upgrade for my personal editing and gaming system. I think if you have a Socket 1150 board with something like a G3258, then this entry-level i5 makes a great upgrade, even if you pay a little more than I did. I wouldn't call this a budget CPU, I just got quite lucky, but if you happen to be looking for a sensible Haswell upgrade, you can't go wrong with this. So that's why I bought the Intel Core i5-4460. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and it helps you out if you're looking for a slightly higher than budget, but not overly expensive upgrade. Let me know what you think of my decision below and if you think I paid a good price for it. Like the video too if you enjoyed it, dislike it if you didn't, subscribe if you haven't already and have a very happy new year.